Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch every night, I'm gonna tell you about 20 dynamite hidden gem movies you can currently catch for free. So all of these movies are currently available on Tubi here in the US, but down in the top pinned comment, I've not only listed all the movies, I've also listed where else you can stream them if you don't like Tubi. I've also listed where you can stream these in other countries around the world in that top pinned comment because they may not be available on Tubi right now. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video, but first I wanna tell you about the bottom 10 on this list of 20. My number 20 pick being a wild one, let the corpses tan. Now this is from 2017, it is mixed language, you'll likely have to read some subtitles, but it's done in kind of a throwback style, in fact it feels sort of like a Tarantino movie, only much artsier, if you can imagine that, much weirder. I mean it ends up being kind of an acid trip of a movie at times, and then other times it's kind of a straightforward crime movie that plays out almost like an old fashioned western. If you like any of the buzzwords I'm using in this description, then this movie might be for you, but I'm telling you, Let the Corpses Tan is for people who like really bizarre art films and don't mind a bit of violence as well. Okay, my number 19 pick is a real surprise of a movie I know a lot of people passed on for good reason. It's titled Shattered Glass, and it actually stars Hayden Christensen right around the time he was playing Anakin Skywalker. I mean, he got roasted for his role in those Star Wars movies, still does to this day, but he actually gives an incredible performance in Shattered Glass. This is actually based on the true story of Stephen Glass, a journalist who worked for the New Republic magazine, and he was found out to have fabricated about half of his stories. And the movie showcases how people began to find out about it, how they confronted him. It's all pretty tense stuff. This isn't a crime thriller, even though I think what he did is illegal, but it's tense at times, almost like a thriller. It's really well done. Like I said, his performance is great and the supporting cast is fantastic here as well. If you're the least bit interested in what I've set up here, then I'm telling you, you're gonna really like this movie, but if it sounds a little dry for you, it might be. Okay, my number 18 pick is far from dry. It's an end of the world movie, and I know those are a dime a dozen, but I'm telling you there's nothing quite like these final hours. Now in this movie, the end of the world is imminent. It's actually happening as the movie begins. An asteroid has collided with one side of the planet and people in Australia are basically just waiting for the final hours. Some people are partying, some people are offing themselves, some of it's chaos, but for the most part the streets are pretty empty and you follow this one main character who's trying to connect with the final few people in his life when he gets sidetracked with this very young girl and ends up kind of taking care of her instead. There's nothing fast paced about this movie. They're not trying to stop the asteroids. Like I said, it has happened and they're really just trying to figure out how to live out the last moments of their life. Considering that, this is an excellent flick. It really touches on a lot of elements to the end of the world that end of the world movies tend to just blow past, making this a much more thoughtful movie than you would expect. And then probably because I suffer from mild dyslexia, my number 17 pick is titled 71. Now this takes place in Belfast in 1971. And if you know anything about Belfast in 1971, then you know if you're a British soldier who gets left behind after a riot, you're in some real trouble. And that's exactly what happens in 71. Jack O'Connell is amazing in this movie. He is even better in my number two pick, which I can't wait to tell you about. But this is kind of an amazing movie about the troubles and gives you a little bit of a different perspective than I got out of other movies about this. It's also a pretty tense thriller, yet it just feels really grounded. It feels like it's really happening, really did happen. To my knowledge, this isn't based on a true story, but the environment that he's in and most of what's happening around the main character is all very accurate. Okay, I've actually got two documentaries on this particular list, and it's because they're two phenomenal documentaries that I have not stopped thinking about since I first saw them. My next pick actually comes from Werner Herzog. It's titled Into the Abyss. Now this movie revolves around a death row inmate named Michael Perry. They do interviews with him as well as people affected by his murder. Into the Abyss does an amazing job of examining the reasons why people kill each other, the reasons why the state kills people, 
and it doesn't do so from a position of judgment really at any point in the documentary. And that means it's not really judging the death penalty, it's also not really judging the crimes of this death row inmate, rather it's presenting them to you in a very real in-depth way, allowing the viewer to really analyze this thing and not be pushed or manipulated in one way or another. Herzog did an amazing job telling this story without kind of having a heavy hand in it. I mean, I learned a lot watching it, and again, it put a lens on something without me feeling like it was really warping anything. Next up, we've got a crime flick from Ireland that actually has two different titles. Here in the US, it's actually titled In the Shadow of Violence. In parts of Europe, it's titled Calm with Horses. Not sure what it'll be where you are, but it's the same movie. And the movie revolves around an enforcer for a local crime family. He's trying to both be this brutal and feared enforcer and also be kind of this tender, loving father. And he's also played by a guy who is maybe a little bit beyond simple. He's actually not very intelligent and he struggles with that. He knows that he's got some limitations and it all comes through in a really amazing performance. Now, this movie has some dark moments, nothing too off-putting, but it's also not packed to the gills with crime activity. It's actually fairly slow paced, but if you like the idea of a crime movie that takes place in this region, I can tell you the movie's top notch, again, incredible performances. It just has a little bit missing and feels a little bit incomplete to me. Otherwise, I would have ranked this one much higher. Now my number 14 pick on this list is the wildest one so far. It's over the top in kind of a fantastic way. It's titled The Belco Experiment. Your chance of survival increases by following my orders. Your task is simply this. Kill three of your co-workers or we will kill six others. Now this was actually produced by James Gunn and it feels kind of like a James Gunn movie. Not quite, but still. This takes place in this big office building that surprisingly gets completely sealed off and everyone inside essentially has to participate in a death match. The way it's presented actually makes a little more sense than what I just described. They set it up pretty well, but it's mostly just a delivery device for seeing people kill each other in an office space. I've recommended another movie here on the channel titled Mayhem. This is similar in a lot of ways, and not just in its setup. I mean, most of what you're watching is similar, but this one's a little bit more tongue in cheek, I think has a little bit more fun with the concept, and ends up being a little bit more of an action adventure movie at times. Now my next pick is a slow burn thriller that is just near pitch perfect, and I know a lot of people miss this one. It's actually titled Trans Siberian. It stars Woody Harrelson and Emily Mortimer. They actually play a married couple at the end of a mission trip, taking a train to Moscow where they encounter some trouble. Now I won't give too many details because it'll spoil a lot of stuff. There's a lot of mystery in this one. Keep in mind I said it's a very, very slow burn, but as far as thrillers go, this one is taut, it's unnerving, and feels like something that could really happen to you. This one never really goes into far-fetched places, but it definitely plays up on fears of international travel. I mean, they're not in a good place in this movie really at any given time. And Woody Harrelson's doing something I've never seen before. He's playing this sort of like train geek, and it works for this movie. It just doesn't quite feel like Woody Harrelson. Ben Kingsley has a really great role in this as well. If you love thrillers and you don't mind something that takes almost an hour to pop, up off, then Trans-Siberian is top-notch stuff. Okay, my number 12 pick's kind of a strange one. It's got some thriller vibes, but it's also just a real solid mystery flick. It's titled The Best Offer. Now, I've maybe only recommended this movie once or twice over the years because I don't see it available on streaming very often, but in this movie, Jeffrey Rush plays a fine art appraiser. And one day while he's appraising some art, he notices a woman spying on him from like a secret room. She refuses to come out, but she'll communicate with him through the wall, and he gradually becomes obsessed with this woman. She is actually played by Sylvia Hoex, who you probably recognize as a love from Blade Runner 2049. I thought she was incredible in that movie. She's just as good in this one. And the best offer will keep you guessing till the end. It's just a, again, a credible mystery movie that doesn't have a lot of macabre stuff in it either. But we will round out my bottom 10 with the most macabre movie on this list, Possessor. Oh, meow.
out. Now this is directed by Brandon Cronenberg, the son of famous director David Cronenberg. And his movies have similar vibes to his father's. They're really weird and creepy, yet he's got his own language in his filmmaking. He most recently did Infinity Pool, which I've also recommended here on the channel. And I do think I liked better than Possessor, but Possessor is still a wild movie. Now you do have to be patient. The basics are that there's this technology that allows you to possess another human being, and one of the main characters in the movie actually utilizes that to carry out assassinations. You actually get all of that in the first five minutes of the movie. Andrea Riceborough stars in this. She's in a ton of stuff, but she's famous from one of the most morbid episodes of Black Mirror. This movie falls right in line with Black Mirror. She's incredible in the movie. I love the vibe and the score and everything, but fair warning, when this one wants to be violent, it is brutal. Now, even though I'm adding to your list of movies today, today's sponsor can also help you remove things from your list of life with Factor. And that's because Factor helps you skip meal prep, grocery shopping, cooking, and cleanup with their fresh, never frozen meals that get delivered directly to your door. And Factor meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you do is heat them and enjoy. You actually get to choose from about 35 chef-crafted meals each week, and they're meals that help support a healthy lifestyle, whether that's keto-friendly, low-calorie, vegan, protein plus, or more wholesome options. So I work from home, like a lot of us now, and I used to have a bad habit of just wandering around the kitchen trying to piece together something for lunch, and it's really nice having a stack of well-crafted meals ready to go in the fridge at a moment's notice. It's one less thing I have to worry about. And I know I'm getting something much healthier than fast food. The price point is similar and I don't have to get in a car to go pick it up. Again, it's ready in the microwave in two minutes. And the meals are all delicious. Like this Indian butter chicken, it wasn't the most appealing butter chicken I've ever had, but it tasted incredible and it's packed with 35 grams of protein. This creamy Parmesan chicken was absolutely delicious, also packed with protein. And then the spicy poblano beef bowl was something I never would have thought to get. I'll definitely be ordering that one again. Factor also has protein shakes, smoothies, and wellness shots that are packed with vitamins, adaptogens, and all sorts of great stuff. Just head over to factor75.com and don't forget to use my code FLICKCONNECTION50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Plus free wellness shots. You get to pick two free wellness shots out of the three available flavors with every single order while you're an active subscriber. Again, go to the link in the description or just head over to factor75.com. Use my code FLICKCONNECTION50 to get 50% off your first box and again, free wellness shots for life. It's a great deal, but speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. And then my number 10 pick is the other documentary on this list, and it is a documentary that will literally change the way you watch movies forever. It's titled Room 237. Some of you may already be able to tell this movie is about The Shining, and specifically The Shining. Now it does go into detail on some of Kubrick's other movies and tries to explain how in-depth he got with his filmmaking, but it spends a lot of time on The Shining digging into all sorts of mysteries and subliminal things that Kubrick put into that movie. Now I do think that this doc reaches a little bit too far. It explores some of the wilder theories about what Kubrick was really doing with The Shining and some of his other movies. But amongst all of that, they point out and explain volumes and volumes of these little minute details Kubrick put into The Shining that give you subliminal little touches. Some of it was done just to make the movie more unnerving in a subtle way, but there's some other elements that are absolutely mind-blowing if they're true. And again, not only will this change the way you watch The Shining and other Kubrick movies, it'll change the way you watch a lot of movies, particularly ones that are a little more thoughtful. Next up, we've got a dialogue-driven thriller that packs a real punch. It's titled Standoff at Sparrow Creek. One's missing. Who's got it? 
This one's actually about a group of militiamen who meet up at this lumber yard where they hide all of their guns, and they do so after a mass shooting only to discover that one of the guns is missing. So very quickly, they determine one of them must be responsible for this mass shooting, and they begin to carry out these very intense interrogations to determine who's responsible. Like I said, it is dialogue heavy, but you've got some amazing performances in this. Really tense scenes of dialogue, and then ultimately the movie delivers, it packs a punch. You do have to be into a dialogue heavy thriller to enjoy this movie, but if that sounds the least bit interesting to you, I'm telling you, this movie's got some killer scenes in it. And for something a little bit lighter, we're gonna go with one from the UK that I've just loved for years. It's titled Frank. I say tell everyone everything. Why cover anything up, right? Now right off the bat, folks from the UK might recognize the Frank head as Frank Sidebottom, a character from an old British comedy show. I'll tell you, the movie has little to nothing to do with Frank Sidebottom. Instead though, this is a movie for musicians or just music lovers. Damal Gleeson actually plays the main character in this movie, a young man who just wants to become a star. He joins a band led by a guy named Frank who refuses to take this paper mache head off. Frank is actually played by Michael Fassbender. He does an amazing job. It's such a different role for him to take on. And the movie itself is quite fun. It's got a lot of funny moments in it, if not quirky ones. But it's actually a really great story as well. The band starts to get famous through YouTube of all places. They go to South by Southwest. And it's a fantastic story, but one of the characters at the core Frank is actually this really emotionally troubled guy, which is why he won't take the mask off. So the movie itself actually has a lot of heart to it as well. Coca-Cola, lipstick ring, go dance all night, dance all night. Kiss me, just kiss me, kiss me, never die, This is your most likable song ever? <laughs> yeah. People will love it. All right, I did not plan this, but I've got two more comedies coming up and then one of Michael Fassbender's greatest roles ever. My next pick though comes from New Zealand and it's got that quintessential New Zealand sense of humor while also being a pretty killer horror flick, Housebound. Now this actually has a lot in common with one of my favorite 90s horror movies, The People Under the Stairs. It's got very similar vibes at time, but like I said, it's got that pure New Zealand sense of humor that you really can't get anywhere else, making this a really funny movie that's also scary. It's got jump scares and some tension, but it doesn't forget to be fun and entertaining either. It's not one that's going to scare the pants off of you, and it's certainly not one that's going to haunt your dreams after you watch it, but it's kind of a raucous, fun horror flick that is still a true blue kind of haunted house movie, almost. So, are you happy to proceed with the story that Mr. McRandall was attacked by a vengeful ghost? Yes. Right on. And then the other comedy on this list is kind of a heavy one. It also comes from the UK. It's titled Four Lions. Well, you can't sit like that. What's wrong with how we're sitting, buddy? Come and have a look. It's wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. Not nothing you. Right, Jamie. Jamie. No. Oh. Right, what are you looking at? There's nothing there. No, there's nothing there. Go and sit down. Now, Riz Ahmed stars in this as a British terrorist. And as funny as this movie is, and even though he's the main character, he is not funny in the movie at all. Rather, he's surrounded by idiots. He's trying to pull off a terrorist attack in London with three morons that don't know their asshole from a hole in the ground. Literally. There's tons of hijinks and silliness, and it's all hilarious. A lot of really funny character acting in this as well. But his role being so serious kind of sets this movie off and makes it really unique. I mean, he's giving a great performance. You can see some desperation. It's not just a silly comedy, which means this one's also got a fair amount of heart to it as well. And it's surprisingly enjoyable considering the fact that you're watching people plan a terrorist attack. Meaning the movie's got a little bit of a light touch that is just perfect for a comedy like this. And then my next pick not only features one of Michael Fassbender's most amazing performances, but it's also kind of the movie that broke him out and made him a big star you still maybe haven't seen it, it's titled Hunger. 
Now this movie's actually not rated, and I think it's because it's got some pretty brutal scenes in it. Uh, it maybe would have deserved an NC-17 rating, it, it, at the very least it's borderline, and this comes from director Steve McQueen. No, not that Steve McQueen. He actually directed 12 Years a Slave, probably the movie he's most famous for. He also did a movie titled Shame, in which Fassbender plays a sex addict, but in Hunger, he plays an IRA leader, I guess we'll say, named Bobby Sands. This is based on a true story, who actually leads a hunger strike inside of a Northern Irish prison. But that's not all. The movie actually takes quite a while before you get to the hunger strike. For the most part, you're seeing what the prison conditions were like for Irish prisoners at that time, and it is disgusting, brutal, just a kind of a savage existence, but the filmmaking here is incredible. If you're a fan of Michael Fassbender, this is kind of a must watch, especially if you consider yourself a movie buff, but it's got this slow, patient filmmaking that's just incredibly effective, making this a top-notch movie that is insanely upsetting, so I do not recommend this for everyone watching. I've got another one from the UK that is incredibly upsetting, but is such a good movie. It actually stars Michael Caine, and one of his last great leading performances, Harry Brown. Now this has a lot in common with the American movie, Death Wish, but it's got its own tone and flavor. In fact, it's a bit darker and grungier than Death Wish, probably because it came out 15 years ago instead of 50. I should say this also stars Emily Mortimer, who was in Trans-Siberian, but Michael Caine plays this older man who is seeing his neighborhood just completely crumble around him. He's seeing young people pick up crime like it's nothing, and he essentially decides to not just put a stop to it, but really goes hard in the paint in this movie. But this isn't the typical old man beating people up movie, kind of like Liam Neeson. No, this actually feels like a way that it could happen. He doesn't use his fists or anything. He actually outwits a lot of these guys, and he's not afraid to use violence either. Sean Harris has become one of the greatest villain actors working today, and I think it's largely because of his role in this movie. There is a scene where Harry Brown goes to a drug den, and who? it's one of the most intense scenes out of anything on this list. This is a grungy one, I'm warning you, but if you generally like things in this genre, Harry Brown is a banger. My next one might help you mentally prepare for the inevitable sex robot takeover. It actually stars Ryan Gosling, Lars, and the real girl. You know, Bianca's um, a missionary. Oh, and look at that, Emily Mortimer stars in this one as well. Hell of a coincidence on this list, but in this movie he actually plays an emotionally troubled man who begins to quote unquote date a sex doll. And this movie's not as weird as it sounds. I don't even think he's actually having sex with this thing. He's actually just bringing it around and introducing it as his girlfriend. What's so great about Lars and the Real Girl is Ryan Gosling's performance. It's unlike anyone he's ever given before, and it's just like funny and tender and kind of sweet in this really affable way. It's, it's a lovely movie that actually goes somewhere. They actually explore this idea and his mental health and how the community kind of helps him overcome this. It's really fantastic stuff, even though it's a very bizarre setup. Like I said, this ends up being a pretty heartwarming movie. And then I promised Jack O'Connell starred in another banger on this list. My number two pick is another prison flick that has a little bit in common with Hunger. It's titled Starred Up. Now in this movie, Jack O'Connell is not this mistreated prisoner. No, he is a wild man. I mean, just an animal in the prison system. And the movie's not really showing how the prison system turns him into this animal. Rather, it's kind of showing how the prison system handles an animal like this. Not only is he fantastic in the movie, but he also meets his father in prison, who's actually played by Ben Mendelsohn. He's always amazing. This movie's no exception. This just being one of the better prison movies I saw in the last decade, and I've seen a ton of prison movies. This one also had a lot of stuff I'd never seen before, which really surprised me. And then my number one pick on this particular list is one I know a lot of people have probably seen by now, but I just recently rewatched it for I think the third or fourth time, and I would love recommending Good Time. How much money can you get right now? 
Come on, bro. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? What do you think I'm doing this for? I don't want to get him out tonight. Now, right off the bat, this one just has like the look and a score that I love. It feels almost like an 80s movie, but it's glossier and more modern day. This is actually directed by the Safdie brothers who would go on to do Uncut Gems, which I do think is maybe a better movie, but somehow I'm still just partial to good time. Robert Pattinson stars in this, and it's an amazing role he did way before I think a lot of real movie people were giving him credit for being a good actor. This being just one of the earlier ones that kind of set him off as having something really special to offer. It's got a fast paced kind of tone and it feels dangerous. It feels like something that's actually happening. Something as simple as him sneaking someone out of a hospital is filmed in a way that, that just puckers up every orifice on your body. It's so tense. And it too has kind of a heartwarming message ultimately, even though you spend the entire movie on this wild ride of this guy essentially trying to escape after a bank heist, get his brother out of jail, rake together some money, evade the police. I mean, the amount of things he's trying to do and the amount of trouble he's in in this movie is insane. And again, it is just expertly directed, incredibly well acted, and has a vibe unlike anything else on this list that I absolutely love, which is why it's my number one pick. Don't forget to go check out the factor link in the description below. But I'll keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Tubi episode, and you will see me on the next one.